Hi, this is Bart Polson, and this is a video for Psychology 1100 Lifespan Development. In this video, we're looking at Chapter 3, Infancy, Section 4, Social and Emotional Development in Infancy. And this will be the shortest video I probably ever make, a few slides. Anyhow, um, the first thing we want to talk about is attachment. And that attachment is, you know, really affection or love. And two very prominent researchers in attachment were uh, Ainsworth and Bowlby. Uh, the primary names in here. And then what they found is that Ainsworth created something called the strange situation where she put people into a room, uh, kids with their mothers into a room, and then the mother uh, or other caretaker would leave and they would watch how the child reacted during that. Um, anyhow, th that's, that's the essential part of it. Um, and from that research, they, uh, they identified a few different uh, patterns of attachment that found that people could be um, classified as either secure or insecurely attached with some variations. And then so securely attached infants, so uh, they would protest when the, mildly when the mother left. They would seek her out, get some interaction when she came back, and they're readily comforted by her. On the other hand, insecurely attached infants could be further classified as avoidant or ambivalent slash resistant. And infants who had avoidant attachment they were the least distressed by their mother's departure. It did not seem to bother them as much. They play on their own without fuss, but they also ignore their mothers when they walk back in. Just, you know, you left me, got nothing to do with you. And then ambivalent, resistant babies are the most emotional. They show severe distress when their mothers leave. They show ambivalence upon reunion by alternately clinging to their mothers and pushing them away. And what you see is that these these early, early forms of attachment um, also have a lot to do about the infant's, uh, the quality of the infant's care and the infant's temperament. So it's not just that the parent causes the child to uh, attach in one way or another. Uh, children come with their own baggage and the child has their own temperament and that can affect the way that the parents react to them. Now, uh, I'll just say a few other things before we go to the next one. The initial pre-attachment phase, this is other stuff here, this is from birth to three months, and it's just indiscriminate attachment. Sort of, baby will sort of latch onto anybody. Uh, it doesn't matter who it is. Uh, on the other hand, during the third and fourth months, you have attachment in the making, and this is where the uh, the infant starts to show preference for familiar figures like the parent. And then around six or seven months, you have the clear cut attachment phase, and this is an intensified dependence on the primary giver, usually uh, the mother. And then. One of the interesting things about this is that securely attached infants show a lot of benefits. They're happier, they're more sociable, they're more cooperative with caregivers. And around ages five or six years old, they get along better with peers and better adjusted in school than insecure children, which is one of the reasons that looking at attachment is really an important thing. Now, what about when attachment fails? The picture you see right here is is from Harlow's this is one of Harlow's monkeys from the rhesus. It's a rhesus monkey, which is used a lot in research. And this is, uh, you know, a, a disturbing but very important study about attachment. And what happened to this one, this was, a, this was a study on the effect of social deprivation. So Harlow had these rhesus monkeys, and they were, you know, reared by these two little surrogate mothers that they made. One was a wire mesh that had the milk. So you see there's got a bottle there. And the other one didn't have milk, but it has this little terry cloth that at least feels somewhat soft and somewhat warm. Um, and they want to see what would happen if they were raised with these two surrogates and with no other contact, no other animals, monkeys or humans or anything. And what they found is a couple of things. First off is that even though the milk is on the wireframe one, uh, the baby, the rhesus monkeys didn't like to be there. They would stay as long as they could on the softer one. Uh, there's some other photos of the baby, of the monkey trying to reach over and get the milk without having to actually transfer. Um, these monkeys experienced really severe deficits. They showed that, and 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 it showed overall that the need for contact comfort is as basic as the need for food in healthy development, and. In a similar vein, institutionalized children, for instance, you know, in orphanages, whose material needs are met, but who receive little social stimulation from caregivers, they also encounter problems in all areas of development. These children often show withdrawal and depression. By the age of four months, they show little interest in adults, and they just kind of sit in their cribs and rock back and forth. Uh, same thing that happened with Harlow's monkeys. And, in fact, none of them were speaking at 12 months old, so really serious um, deficits. 
Now, I'm just going to link this into something a lot of people think about attachment and they think about daycare. And I'll just mention very quickly, not all daycare arrangements are equal. Some studies find that infants with positive daycare experience uh, experiences are actually more peer-oriented peer and play at higher developmental levels than home-reared infants. And that, you know, children in high-quality daycare are more likely to share their toys. They're more independent. They're more self-confident. They're more outgoing and affectionate. They're also more helpful and cooperative with peers and adults. And, in fact, even show they have better academic performance in elementary school. So the point here is that um, the kind of daycare that a person gets can be very, very uh, significant. And that... Good daycare, and I'm going to let you figure out what that means in your particular situation, can actually be very beneficial for the child. Okay, now I want to talk about another thing uh, when things go wrong, and this in particular I want to mention autism. So autism spectrum disorders, uh, also sometimes abbreviated ASD, these are impairments in communication skills and social interaction. Also, people with autism show a lot of repetitive stereotype behavior. And the key indicators are the no babbling, no or not babbling, not pointing, not making meaningful gestures by one year old, and not speaking words or combining words by two, and also not responding to names or losing language or social skills. And now there's a lot of variations of autism spectrum disorders, but autism is the the one major type because there's Asperger's and, and others like that. Also, autism is four or five times more common among boys than among girls. Uh, Children with autism don't show interest in social interaction, may avoid eye contact, and attachment to others is weak or absent. Um, also, autism is frequently accompanied by communication disorders or an uh, intolerance of change in ritualistic or stereotype behavior. But again, it's going to vary substantially. Um, I imagine that all of you know people with autism, and you can see some of these aspects in there. And again, that's why they call it a spectrum, because it varies in its nature and it varies in its severity and the kind of uh, impairments that are associated with it. Okay, the last thing we want to look at here is emotional development. And differences in emotional development, they could be first related to attachment at the age of 14 months. So resistant children who were most fearful and frequently responded with distress, even in episodes designed to evoke joy. And then when tested repeatedly over time, it became apparent that securely attached children were becoming significantly less angry. Um, by contrast, the negative emotions of insecurely attached children uh, rose over time. Uh, they became more fearful. They became uh, even less joyful. And at 33 months of age, securely attached children were less likely to show fear and anger, even when they were exposed to situations designed to specifically elicit those particular emotions. And then stranger anxiety peaks around 9 to 12 months, declines in the second year. So infants also display what's something called social referencing, where they use the caregiver's facial expressions or tone of voice as clues as how to respond as early as six months of age. And this is another form of imitation and social learning that goes on. And we're going to have a lot more to say about how people develop, uh, especially in young childhood. And that's where we're going to pick up in the next chapter.